is up guys welcome back to the channel guess what today is it's primer day and plastic ready to go I've already went ahead and skipped forward and uh, sprayed a little bit of uh, direct metal um, and some cell fetch on all the bare metal spots quite a few bare metal spots to be honest I probably should have done epoxy but it's just going to delay the process so I just decided to do some cell fetch and DTM see right there uh, I had to uh, redo the plastic because I accidentally left my keys inside of it last night. So today I actually had to redo all this, unfortunately. It's one of those things. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get suited up and get ready to spray.
Well, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the uh, primer stage on the driver's side for the EM1 Civic. Now, I am going to show you my little bit of a, my ghetto setup. I had to mix my paint on the floor because this painting cabinet, as it folds out, it would have hit the spoiler of the Civic. So, unfortunately, I wasn't able to utilize that paint cabinet. So, uh, I ended up having to use it on the floor. But here i'm checking my temperatures uh, a lot of uh, your flash times are going to be contingent upon your temperature you can see it's uh, right around 70 degrees in my garage which is pretty good uh, temperature to spray in now everything is going to be contingent on the paint you're going to be using so uh, on the primer can it actually has specific directions uh, as far as overlap what type of activator reducer uh, how much time in between coats um, now the time between coats is going to depend just on temperature this one likes uh, 80 degrees unfortunately i don't have 80 degrees in the garage i'm also showing you how much space i have in between uh, basically the doors or the parts that i took off and the actual car i could barely walk on this i i almost hit it <laughs> i almost hit it a couple times especially with this big little uh fanny pack that's on the back uh, which is my respirator by 3m um barely any space so i'm really really tight here how to change up my technique a little bit i did have a few things land in the primer uh as well too so i actually had a piece of plastic that came from the uh plastic sheeting when i cut it so that actually ended up landing in the paint uh, I, sorry, in the primer. So I ended up having to uh, grab some sandpaper. Usually I use about 600 grit with this one. Um, something smooth, but at the same time able to cut down on whatever nibs or trash that might have landed in it. This is uh, how I get cleaner jobs. Just making sure that you take care of those stuff before you lay down another coat of, of primer or sometimes even base. Uh, clear it's already too late if it's already landed in the clear sometimes you could pick it out but uh, as far as sanding it yeah you, you can't do it with clear but base and primer you can use uh, utilize this technique a little bit so i was going to use a soft block and just sand it down with the 600 uh, instead i ended up grabbing a scotch bright um, i found that the uh, sanding block even though it was a soft one uh, was a little bit too uh, too rigid and so I wanted something a little bit more softer. So I ended up getting the scotch Bright, wrapped it with the 600 and went to town, started sanding out that, uh, that uh, bit of plastic that landed in the primer. And I also went ahead and went through all of the car and just sanded all the dirt nibs and anything, any, any defect that I could find. Um, luckily no bugs landed in it, um, but my primer gun was actually leaking a little bit from the tip. So I did have a couple spots where um, I had to fix the uh, a little bit of the dribble that came out of the, the primer gun. So here I'm just showing you all the spots where I sanded um, small defects here and there. You got to make sure that your primer is fully dry. If not, you're just going to end up smearing it. Um, so as you guys can see, that plastic uh, part that landed in the primer, that's all gone. And uh, you can't leave it like this. Or well, at least I don't suggest it. So you're going to have to uh, clean it, of course, first. I like to use these super rags. These are probably the best ones I have found. I get this from my local paint store, and I highly recommend them. Do not go cheap and buy these. These are some that I bought on Amazon, and literally you'll end up with more trash than you started with using these. These are like super thin. As soon as they get a little bit of wax and grease remover or some, some sort of a cleaning solvent, they start coming apart and yeah, just make a big mess. So don't go cheap on that. Don't buy the Amazon ones. Um, and yeah, you, you should be good. Now, um, like I said, you do have to wipe down um, where you sanded. The reason being is because you're basically creating dust. So make sure you wipe it nice and clean. Get rid of all that dust and don't drop your rag like i did um, i just went ahead and just flipped it inside out and used the clean part and then started wiping um, probably not something i could do but these things are expensive man uh, if i worked at a shop yeah i'd get a brand new one but 
I'm like, I'm broke. <laughs> I literally have to buy all my supplies. So a little goes a long way. So I try to uh, use them as much as I can. I will end up blowing it off. Probably don't show it in this scene, but uh, I do end up blowing it off and then um, going ahead and uh, start to spray the, uh, the primer once again. So I'm going to start uh, painting the car from the back. The reason being is because of airflow. Uh, the airflow is traveling from the back all the way to the, towards the front. And um, so I usually do the same thing with how I spray the car. I'll usually start from the back and end up spraying it towards the front. Um, I end up changing my technique a little bit. Usually I'm chasing that wet edge. And even though I am still chasing the wet edge, I would usually just finish spraying the panel or in most cases, I probably start from the very bottom of the quarter panel and then kind of work my way up and then over and across. Um, not sure why I changed my technique a little bit on this one, probably due to lack of space, but as long as you're chasing that wet edge, um, you should be fine. Primer is a little bit more forgiving than say paint or clear. Um, so as long as you're, you're chasing that wet edge, you should be fine. Um, and uh, so yeah, so that was pretty much the last coat that I had to do and uh, I called it a day. Alrighty guys, so we're done spraying four coats of primer. Um, went ahead and took care of some dust nibs and then go ahead and spray some more primer. This is what it's looking like now, I gotta let it dry. And uh, yeah, so it's gotta be sitting here for probably three or four days. I like to let the primer dry as much as possible so that it can swell or shrink or whatever it's going to do uh, within that time period. Uh, when it gets really hot outside, my garage turns into an oven. So I use that to my advantage. I'm basically letting the car stay in an oven for basically four days and letting that primer just dry out. So that's what I'm gonna end up doing. That's gonna be the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Stay spraying. Catch you guys on the next one. See ya.